they chose to ignore because of their contempt for Congress and their disdain for governance. And so that's why to this. Now, President Trump claims he halted talks because he didn't want to play games with House Democrats. And I think we can all see why he was frustrated. Hopefully, the two sides can come together soon for the good of the American people and our economy. Join me now from Dallas, Texas, financial expert and co-founder and chief strategist of GDP Advisors, Seth Denson. Seth, uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she was they were really hard at work uh, on, on their first round of stimulus here. Uh, but the one that President Trump rejected included random things like uh, vote a voter ID ban, uh, mandate ballots to be counted if they arrive 10 days after the election, almost $500 billion for blue state bailouts, uh, among many other non-related pork left-wing wish list i mean that's what this is i mean and 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 that's what we continue to see and 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 pelosi doesn't want to budge on this either as a matter of fact i loved the tact that the white house wanted to go after and saying let's do this in a number of small bills this is what i've been saying all along stephanie is that we need to be very poignant and specific laser focused on our expenditures and that's what the white house was moving towards and pelosi said no i want a big package i want my wish list and she's playing the politics of it that she thinks she can win in the end by continuing to use the mainstream media to push her narrative well and it's unfortunate because the average american who's struggling at home wondering how they're going to make ends meet they probably don't know what the democrats were pushing and they need to know like what is a banning voter ID have to do with coronavirus relief? What is having the, ma- the, to the ballots counted 10 days after the election have to do with coronavirus? Nothing. And the mainstream media does not report this. They don't give you what's in there. They don't tell you. Uh, they just tell you, oh, uh, mean Republicans don't want you to have relief. Yeah, this has more pork than Hillshire Farms. I mean, that's that's the reality of this whole thing. And, and we need to certainly be honest with the American people. And sadly, I mean, like I've mentioned a moment ago, most of the media is a running commercial for the Biden campaign and the wish list. And so sadly, most American uh, citizens are not properly informed of what's being put in here. And all they're hearing are the talking points that the, that the president doesn't want to act. But this is the same president that put an executive order to to protect those that were unemployed. And we need to spend a lot of time focusing on small business support. This is a big chunk of our economy that has gone largely unprotected in this. And they don't have the luxury of Chapter 11 reorganization like many large corporations do. Yeah. I, I, President Trump planned to send the $1,200 stimulus checks directly to the American people. I know that's controversial uh, among Republicans or some that support it, some that think it's a waste of money. I know a lot of people who have benefited from it who actually need Need it. Uh, where do you stand on that? Well, certainly I'm all for the, the citizenry of the United States getting money from the federal government. Uh, it's our money anyway. But at this point, it's not our money. It's future generations money. And and I, I'm not opposed to anybody that needs the money getting it in a stimulus. But there are certainly a number of Americans that aren't unemployed that haven't seen a downturn in their paychecks. And so maybe let's be more specific in how we're spending money, considering it's not today's taxes. That's tomorrow's taxes. Uh, what about bailouts for the airlines? We know that they're really struggling. If you've been to an airport lately, it's kind of like a ghost town. No, you spend a lot of time in airports too. And uh, I took my first flight since March this past week. And I will tell you, it was, it was very eerie um, to see what's going on. We certainly need to make sure that our economy stays intact in the skies, and that's our airline issue. That's 750,000 plus employees there. However, this does not need to be like the auto bailouts. If the American citizen is going to bail out the airline industry, it needs to be through stock issuance. That's what I'm hoping for because uh, for the past number of years when, when the economy was doing well and airlines were doing well, they were doing stock buybacks. If we're going to bail them out and they want to buy it back, they should have to buy it back from us. All good points. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Dad. Coming up next.